for kind of some background on essentially your business and what you do and okay. who your target market is kind of and all right let me i will come up there i'm sorry um it's part of the reason that i need your help <laughs> um do you, want, you want me um yeah i might just kneel on it actually i broke my foot going into the barrel room um not out of it thank goodness um and in november and it's just been a winter from hell because i was unable to even leave my home or drive for almost four months which is like prison so um um, I have the Oklahoma Bed and Breakfast, and um, I've been doing that actually for 21 years, um, which is like uh, the average, when I got into the business, the average life expectancy of an innkeeper in terms of longevity of doing that was seven years. Now it's three, so I don't know when to quit. Um, you know, it's, it's a beautiful old home. Um, I had a partner in the beginning. Uh, and we renovated the house. It had not been occupied, so it was really not something you just walked into turnkey and said, "Well, let's market this place." Um, so, uh, and you know, I've seen the transition from literally when 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 I first started marketing the house. Uh, you know, you were making photocopies of brochures and putting them out at the SA gas station and hoping someone might pick it up. Um, and so the, the gradual transition to where there was at least digital printing, to emails, to the smartphone and the whole mobile um, social media has, has allowed me to be sane. Um, because I literally was corresponding with my guests texting on the way here. They didn't show up at the time that they had told me. In the, law, in the old days, I would never even have been able to make a commitment to come to something or leave the house knowing that the guest you know, you'd have sent them a letter. You, I mean, it was, it's just amazing how in 20 years what has, what has changed. Um, the problem with that is that I, my, I have not kept up. I'm the first to admit I don't know what to do anymore. Um, I, I live there uh, alone. I do, not, I do everything from gardening to marketing to grocery shopping to interaction with the guest. I love the concierge part of that. What can I match my guest up with? What are their interests? what what can make them want to come back what's going to give them you know under promise and over deliver is really what i want to do and i have really good reviews on TripAdvisor. um i guess like me if they find me they come back um but something's happening and and so when when i got the email from tim i was very um excited because i was already asking is there a is there a student is there something that can help me because i don't know what to do i don't I can't just buy myself into it. You know, I know it's a pay-to-play in a lot of ways, but um, you know, what are the best places that I can be with a with a minimal budget? Because I have four rooms, so um, I can't just say, well, in order to pay for my marketing, I think I'll go from charging $134 a night to $500 a night, and that'll cover everything. Um, so I'm I'm struggling with what to do. Um, one to to increase my business and um, to how to do that the most efficiently and in a way that I can do it. Um, the website that I have, I actually was a part of a marketing um, business and I did all of the um, customer contact. I was the writer, I was the idea person, but I did not know how to use a mouse very well. I was much more of a keyboard person and a, and a writer. Um, and so I, I have Mac appliances but um, my colleague we even worked remotely um, in distance he, he lives in Hudson I lived in um, Menominee and worked in Eau Claire um, we rarely saw each other so I did not have that opportunity to say hey how'd you do that show me show me how to do that again I asked my friends how did how do you know how to do this how do you and they're like oh my grandson showed me or oh my husband showed me I don't have any of those things that just kind of rubs off and so I'm really knowing that I'm desperate to know what to do um, next. Um, one of the things that I would like to do more of is, is certainly um, to, to be more able to respond when, when there are things going on in the community. So adding a blog, adding specials, adding the kinds of things that can say, 
hey, if you want to come and go and see all of our microbreweries in the area, here's the map. Here's, you know, come for this special um, and you'll get a discount, whatever, and to be able to put that onto my website or to be able to post it on Facebook. I do have a Facebook page. Um, I can update it when I when I get to it, um, but I, I don't have those links right now to be able to work. I know that my website is dragging me down because it's way too wordy and I want to be able to have the ability to, to um, what do you call it, um, uh, when I post something that's going to populate from, from different places and I know about Hootsuite, I know about all those things, but I don't do them. Because then the guest shows up and they talk for two hours and you go, oh, I guess it's time to go to the grocery store now. Um, so I'm looking for ways that I can, one, generate more money for myself, um, give the guest a good experience, give them something that they wouldn't get elsewhere um, in the community, um, and, and add value to what I'm trying to market, which is a room. So... Um, if I can put together packages so that they can get theater tickets at the Mabel Tainer or they're going to have, I'm going to have a basket with um, bike trail passes and two tickets to Lucette's afterwards and that kind of thing. Um, I don't have any trouble putting the packages together. I don't know how to get the packages onto my website. I don't know how to, how to put that together efficiently as to do I post that on Facebook? Should I be then taking pictures and putting it in Instagram? How do I make that work together? That's what I'm thinking. Um, I would also like to do more special events at the house, which will, from my perspective, I have elderly parents, which is another reason that for the last three years I would sometimes be gone as much to 10 or 15 days out of a month because of their health issues. Which makes it I can I can log on from their from their assisted living and I can communicate with my guests, but it's not quite the same as 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 um, being able to sit at my desk and do that. So um, those are sort of my apologizes apologies for not do, not having things up very up to date. But I for the last three years all I've done is kind of hang on by my fingernails and hope that the guests have a good experience. I know something is going on. Um, Certainly, you can't ignore the fact that there's a Hampton Inn in town and a cobblestone. Uh, hello, you know, so there's 160 rooms that just came in that are quality rooms, brand new. Let's go to the new place. Example, for 21 years, family weekend, which was just last weekend, has been the biggest weekend of the year for me. I have always had a waiting list. I have always turned people away. I was empty. I did not get a call. I even called some of the other hotels who also did were not at capacity. And so what made what had been sort of a revenue stream progression, people coming to nothing. And I am like, is there a different place that I should be posting myself? Is it, you know, what has happened that my business has just really taken a nosedive? And I will tell you also there's two other B&Bs in town and they're both for sale. Um, and one was not, they maybe operated for five, six years, and they're already hanging it up. Um, so I'm sort of stubborn and looking at how I can, one, I want to maintain the business because if, if I'm at a point where I want to sell it within another year and a half, I need to have a, a business that has some value to it um, and to be able to say, oh, are you interested in buying this B&B? &B? Here's what, here's... Um, the revenue stream that I have here are some ideas that I think would work. Um, yes, I haven't done as much as I could, but at least it hasn't it hasn't backslid. So that's sort of where I'm at. Um, I'm interested in possibly rebranding because what I did was probably 2008, 2010 when I um, changed everything. In 2008 was the last big recession. When real estate market tanked, my partner left, um, and so what I had as a property that I thought was going to be, we invested blood, sweat, and tears into it. Well, in 2008, nobody was buying houses. 2008, people were getting laid off, things were closing, lots, you know, that was the whole uh, recession. Um, and so I, I, I went to China. 
Um, I went on a trip and it was a great unplugged sabbatical and I thought I cannot change the housing market, I cannot change the economy, I can only change my attitude. So I changed my brand. I changed it from the Oaklawn Bed and Breakfast, which bed and breakfasts have a bad reputation of being very expensive, very foofy, that you only go with your girlfriend or your or your fiance and and you spend a lot of money and and um, you can't sit on the furniture because it's full of antiques, um, which is not true. Um, and so I changed it to the Oaklawn Inn. I painted, upgraded a lot of what I have in terms of trying to market more. In some ways I just changed how I describe what I do rather than what I physically changed anything. Some of the changes that I did mentally was that it had it had been the Oaklawn bed and the Oaklawn farm, which has always been the Oaklawn farm for 129 years. That's what it originally was called. Um, that was being run by run as a bed and breakfast where Maggie lived. Two. This is Maggie's home. Um, she calls it Oaklawn, and it's it's a running as a bed and breakfast, and it made it much more comfortable for me, and also I think engages the guests a little more in. Well, oh, that's interesting. Um, you know, what does she do? Where does she live? What you know? What is that picture on the wall that you got in China? Um, instead of kind of the old, well, this is a Victorian house, and it looks just like all the other Victorian houses. I did not, I couldn't live in a museum anymore. So. Um, I can keep talking forever. Which Do you guys is, have any questions? So I'm looking for what are the, you know, one, I think I really need to redo my website. Um, what is a free or reasonably priced platform that I could build that on that I can maintain? Because one of the problems when I stopped doing the marketing with my colleague is that he never taught me how to update it or do anything with it. And I am not a good person with, oh, just change that. To me, if that is the only source of me putting the word out for my marketing, I'm the last person you want going, if I push this button and I delete the whole thing, you know, I'd be back to making the photocop copies of the brochures and putting them in the Super America store. So, um, you know, I, I think I, I'd like to look at it to be a little more contemporary. Um, but at the same time, I want to go back to the heritage. I, in some ways, I've gone from this is an old horse farm, very nostalgic, very Victorian, to um, more of a this uh, come here and it's, it has all the amenities you might want. You, you have large rooms. My guest rooms are large, chairs, laptop tables. You have your own, you have a little refrigerator. You have complimentary beverages. Um, there's nothing there that you can't get at a Hampton Inn. Plus, I can accommodate any kind of dietary need. I can, I. You know, whatever, if there's something you need that you want that will make your experience better, or you're traveling with a companion and they need something special, I'll do it, you know. So, um, how do I get that word across? But now I'm noticing that people are sort of starting to look in the same way that I think the, the buying local and supporting our, our communities is coming around. I think people are starting to pay a little more attention again to the fact that there's a real heritage there. It really was built by a lumber baron. It was built by Andrew Tainter. It has that history that the Mabel Tainter Theater has. And um, it was this old horse farm. And it was unique and different and interesting. And so how do we, how do we bring that into play with um, how in the heck did a, you know, did a guy that raised racehorses end up in Menominee? And in that, you know, and to sort of add some of those little quirky things that people can say, well, that's, I mean, that's where, let's stay there. So, okay, now I'll stop. Any questions, you guys? Any comments? A quiet group. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you say your your target market is? What do your typical <coughs> clients look like? Is it usually just couples and girlfriends, or? Hmm. Right now, um, I'm full tonight. Um, I have, and and so the business clientele is is a group that I I continue to try to cultivate. Because um, people, and some of you may have traveled for business, or your parents did, or um, they get tired of being on the road. And so anything I can do that makes it seem more like a comfortable, certainly still a very professional, and, and they have the, the privacy and the solitude they may need to do to get things done, but they they kind of appreciate that it's more home-like than just uh, same old holiday and same corridor, same menu. 
um, that they're going to stay in for the next 10 weeks. So tonight is an example I have a woman that's a consultant with Phillips Plastics, and she's been with me one to three nights a week for almost a year, which is great, except the more nights they have, the more I reduce their cost. And so it's almost, then it almost turns into a rooming house situation where, um, you know, they're paying more of a monthly fee almost, but it, it really helps to keep my, have some consistent income. I also have a faculty member that, that's been with me for um, probably eight years. And again, that his stay depends on when his class schedule is, and then he's not there, of course, during when, when there's no school. Um, and tonight, then I have two other people coming in that have been with me off and on, uh, maybe once every two to three months, um, that are here for Phillips Plastics also. So I would like to figure out, or Phillips Medicize, if it's called now, but figure out how to reach out to more of the business community. As soon as I say that, then all of a sudden I get this big wave of people who's coming because they're coming to bike the trail, they're coming to go to the Mabel Tainer Theater, so the, the typical tourist kind of person. And I, and I have coordinated tourism, I was the tourism person for the chamber here. I mean, I, I'm pretty knowledgeable about what tourism is and, and who those people are, but I'm not sure how, I'm, I'm, you know, it's sort of like I could tell you how to do tourism, but doing it for myself is, is sort of one of those like, oh yeah, I should be doing that, shouldn't I? Um, so I hope that, working with your group in some way will hold my feet to the fire too of if we both have an obligation to get something done, it'll it'll get done much more than me just saying, oh, well, I don't have time to do this right now. Um, so it, I, you know, if I'm doing packages, then I think those, those could also be the millennials who are looking for more experiential things, um, you know, the, the disc, the disc golf, the, the, the mountain biking, uh, you know, the bike trails that we have, um, the, the microbreweries I think is a great asset, you know, two more will come online, we'll have two more microbreweries in town by the end of the summer. Um, wineries, I don't even be able to tell you how many wineries there are within probably a, an hour radius, which is what I think of in terms of if you come as my guest, where can I, where can I send you, you know, um, and so I, that's why I'm interested in how I can put more packages onto both marketing that on Facebook in terms of, of reaching out to different special groups, special interest groups, but also having them available on my website. Um, quilting is a big thing for, for ladies groups. You know, where is the fabrics? Who's got, who's got quilts? Um, you know, birding is, is a big thing, and, and people who are retired and, and really into birding will, I mean, I, I get guests who come from Madison and Milwaukee up here every fall to, to go up uh, in the Chippewa Bottoms down by Durand and Downsville and, and look at the birds. Um, so it, I have to, I guess what I'm thinking is I need to be able to do more niche marketing for those special groups and then how do I do that and, and use my website as sort of as my brochure for those particular things and then catch them. At the same time that if all of a sudden, you know, it, it's been such terrible weather and you go, wow, this is a perfect weekend, you know, the, um, the pussy willows are out and uh, you know, the, the bluebirds are come back or whatever it is. Several years ago, I, I used to have thousands of monarchs, you know, they're all talking about how the monarchs are, are dying and another sign of climate change and everything. The first few years we had the house, because I have pictures of it, early August, I, I, I kid you not, it looked like a Disney Pixar movie. I mean, there were thousands. If you walked, it, you know, it, I should be Snow White or something. If I walked down the driveway, butterflies just went everywhere. It was amazing. But they don't come back now. So that was going to be a real good one. But So I guess I'm open to, I guess I'm looking at how can I, how can I create a website and, 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 and learn the mechanics so that if there's something that comes up, I can do that. I'm interested in doing some high teas. That's becoming something that people are doing in all sorts of uh, venues. And, and so mine lends itself to that. For many years, for 17 years, I worked in the arts. So I know about booking things. I know about how to present music. I know. So I want to have teas that incorporate either a historic story about the community 
or there's say say you do high tea but instead of just doing victorian little tea yes we'll have the teacups and i have the silver tea service and stuff but maybe the theme is going to be movie themes and we're going to have you know maybe these these are um knockoff uh cupcakes from what audrey hepburn was eating when she was in a in a movie or maybe you know so that there's some theme and then someone is going to play music or movie themes or whatever so for one thing then someone's going to come Again, oh, we need to go to that. We need to go to those teas. So it isn't going to be a been there, done that, but oh, I wonder what she's going to do this time. Um, and one of the reasons I like doing the special events like that is I can control when it happens and, and hopefully, um, as you all know, it's, it gets hard to get people to help you so that you can say, okay, I'm going to do three teas in the course of the next four months, and they're going to be on these weekends, and there'll be three seatings, and I'm going to charge 35 or 45 dollars a person. But then I know I don't have to worry about. Well, are you coming this weekend to bike? And oh, you you first told me you were going to you were going to come for you you were coming with your friends. You needed two rooms, and you were going to come for three nights. But now you found out that your friend has to work, so he's only going to come for two nights. But then your friend actually calls me and, te and tells me, well, he's gonna not, he has to work, but his girlfriend's going to come the other night. But she doesn't really want to play for the full room, so she's going to sleep on the floor in your room on the first night. But then they want the other room, and, and then the other room that was going to come decided not to come because the dog is sick. So, and in the meantime, my friends all decided they were going to go to Madison for the weekend and see a music and go to a music festival, and I didn't go, and then I get really crabby because I missed out on life. <laughs> So that's what I'm trying to do is have more control of when I have the business and have it be not weather dependent as much for the kinds of things that I can then market to people, I hope. Um, what, do you know what you use to manage your website right now? Um, I wouldn't even know what you mean by that. Um, how do you update it? I can't. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, my my colleague, ex-colleague, it's, oh, so it's in WordPress, okay. and I don't know the last time it was actually updated. He does update it for me. If I, if I send him something and say, please change the price of this, I might update it once or twice a year. But I would like to, you know, everyone says that WordPress is a really good um, uh, platform to use, but it, it's still complicated. Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't know if going to something very, very simple um, and then having other ways to, to put in, whether it's through a blog or, or just doing Facebook with events, um, it would be an easier way for me to update if I'm going to do some kind of special occasion. Do you spend a quite a bit of time on Facebook? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do much with it myself. Um, I, you know, I have my own site and I have, I mean, I have a personal site, you know, so I can look at my great niece and nephew, but... Um, I'm not. I. I. I I'm, it's. It's a time sink. It's. Um. We get sucked in too much on it. I. I can see the value of it. So. Yeah. It sounds like you have all the good marketing ideas and things you want to do. We just need to find a platform that's mm -hmm. easy enough to be taught or for you to learn it quickly and um, efficient to get your message and ideas across. Because people are telling me that, at least from what I'm reading and hearing, Instagram would be probably the next thing to add in terms of photos. Instagram would get to the younger market, and Facebook would probably mm -hmm. be more for like the older couples and stuff that come here for the things like you said, like the bird watching and stuff like that. So right. they all have their benefits. And then, and then my site, is, I guess I always think of a website as being more like an electronic brochure. Mm -hmm. And when it, when I designed the site. Um, and it hasn't been updated. So, like the things like the restaurants and the things to do in the community, I put that together because the chamber didn't have it. Um, and I got so frustrated with every time someone asked me, Well, where do you suggest for dinner? And my gosh, I'd have to keep typing these, you know, and I had a sort of a thing that I could send them with links to Jake's and the log jam and whatever. Here's the fish fry places. But so then um, in the last few years with the chamber, we updated to where they had a website that at least has the ability to go to um, what's happening in town and I can I can just give them a direct link to here's restaurants or whatever. Um, but I still tend to send people, I try to customize what they want, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Because what I'm reading is that even the big big guys like Hyatt and Marriott and some of them are getting away from, you know, the the TripAdvisor, or not TripAdvisor, but um, Travelocity and um, Booking.com. I mean, all of those places will take anywhere from 12 to 18% of your of your room price, you know, and um, and then I also lose control. They're doing the then they're doing the booking and not me. Yeah. And and it would be different, I guess, if I had 20 rooms or or 100 rooms. So because they'll say, oh, well, we'll just take a certain per- percentage of your room. So I could give you 20. If I had 100 rooms, I could give you 20, and I could give you 20. And you're gonna you're gonna market to you know uh, Travelocity, and you're gonna be um, kayak and. And um, we'll see who you know who's gonna who's gonna rent out the most rooms, but even even like Airbnb, which I'm trying to get on, but I believe me, there's there is like pages of legalese about Airbnb. Everybody thinks that's just this cool little mom and pop thing, and it is huge. And even they now don't don't want me necessarily. They're gonna penalize me um, if if I want to book with you direct. Because uh, with Airbnb, it was always, will you just send me an email and then and it will go through kind of like a match, um, a dating site or something where it's it's a neutral site so that you don't necessarily know who I am until I approve that yes, it sounds like this would work out well and then here's how we here's how we communicate. But now they're going to where they'll they want to do the booking, so I won't even know. You know, they'll say, well, you know, um, John is wants wants two rooms on, you know, October first. Well, I don't know. Is John coming alone, or is he is he coming with his family, or is he coming with, you know, uh, five of his buddies because it's a bachelor party? I mean, that's going to have a big impact on on um, whether or not one whether my property is a good fit for what you're coming for, and two that I don't get caught with. Oh my gosh! You know, you, you come carrying in a, a keg of beer because you thought the porch would make a great party house, and and I'm sitting there going, I thought you were coming for homecoming and you were visiting friends or something. So I'm trying to get more on that because I would say that Airbnb is really taking over the booking end of it. And and as someone told me many many years ago, do you want to? Do you want to fish with what you want to fish with, or do you want to fish with what the fish want to eat? And and Airbnb is in all sorts of lawsuits and all sorts of things because they are trying to get around the government and the taxes. And you know, I have to be licensed. I mean, they come in and tell me how how I have to make the bed and what the temperature of my refrigerator is. And if you go on Airbnb, you know, do you ask them though that they change the sheets? <laughs> so. Uh, how long the how long the uh, milk's been in the refrigerator? Uh, you know, so it's it's hard for those of us who try and follow the rules too. But it's the only place right now that people are looking. So, so you uh, yeah. So I I'm very open to. I mean, I've looked at WordPress and I I tried to figure. I had some people try and look at it, but it's old. We were on the we were on the beginning end of WordPress. So in some places we actually constructed some of our own. Um, to make it work, um, because you didn't have just have all these plugins at the time, um, and 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 so I've never learned how to do it. He didn't want to teach me. It was I think it sort of would be like the equivalent when they say you shouldn't teach your girlfriend how to drive. So um, it just wasn't good because he'd just say push the button. Don't worry about it, and I'd be like, "Oh my gosh!" But how do I do it? Especially when you're on the phone. I'm a visual learner. Show me, and I'll know. Any other questions, you guys? Um, what would you, if we had a website, like what budget are you looking at? Um, I don't know because I don't know what things cost. Are you talking about maintaining it or or actually building it? Well, um, hosting, because hosting a website, like your domain name and stuff, do you pay for that currently? Yes. Okay. Um, but but the oh, you know, and, and so much of that has changed again. We used to really, when we were doing the marketing, we would recommend if you were a, a business that we recommended that you purchase the site so that you had more control over it so that you all of a sudden they weren't going to say, oh, we changed our mind or in order to do this, you have to pay us more money. Um, so if you, per- if say I, you this was your site, we would have said, well, here, because now that you own the photos, you own the, 
you own the rights to it, um, you can move it anywhere you want. You know, if if I go into GoDaddy, I can build a I can build a website in GoDaddy, or you know, everybody's got got ways now that you can build a website. But I honestly don't know which are the ones that are more user friendly, and um, would allow me to do that. Um, and then I know in today today's environment where so much of that is in the cloud, I'm, I'm just basically paying an annual or a monthly fee to, to have them do that. But I'm also having trouble, um, and maybe you're aware of this or hearing about it in some of your, your sessions, I've had the same email address and website um, through GoDaddy, and it points um, to, uh, it's a, so it's a, it's a Google um, site that, that goes through GoDaddy and comes to my website. And all of a sudden, nobody is giving my emails. And now I'm hearing that what used to be the standard was oaklawnin.com. Because you didn't want to just have um, Maggie's, um, Maggie's sleep and stay at Yahoo. That sounded like it wasn't going to be professional. Um, and now they're telling me that you almost have to have a Gmail account because all my emails, I would say 25% of them are going to spam. And they're telling me that this is a Gmail problem. And Google wants you to have a Gmail account rather than have the .com business account. And I don't know if that's true or not. But people are telling me over and over they did not get my emails. And they'll find it in their spam file. People that I have communicated with for years. My webmaster, my, my ex my ex colleague, did not get my plea of why are my emails going to spam. So now if you call and we just and we discuss and, and I'm going to confirm your reservation with an email, I have to text you and tell you check your spam file, which isn't doesn't sound real professional. And that's with the oaklawnin.com, um, and I've had that email address for at least eight years. And nothing changed. So I'm, I'm, I'm stymied with that, too. Because it makes me sound like I don't know what I'm doing. And, and I take it over to the Mac man, and, you know, and they're like, oh, we've never seen anything like this before. Like, I also have a problem where every once in a while, my emails will switch. So you send me an email and, so, and, and the subject line says, um, you know, Digital Marketing Club. And Applebee's sends me an email that says, here's your monthly special. I'm going to open your email and it's going to be the body subject of the Applebee. It's like the content and the sender get mixed. And what do you use to have your email posted with? Or like, where do you log in to access your email? It's, it's AT&T. And, and again, it happens very randomly. I can, and we've looked at it, and it's like, I've, I've checked, well, is it because you have charter and the other person had charter? And maybe they did. Is it because you sent your email at 1237 and you sent yours at 1238? It doesn't make any rhyme or reason. Is it because both were businesses or both were personal emails? It's like I just had it happen again today. Then I have to send that email to myself and put in the subject line that so I don't lose it because otherwise, because I get probably 100 emails a day. So. Anyone else got anything to ask? I told you I could talk forever. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming in. Um, so. We'll probably discuss how to go about tackling it. Um, is there, do you think your ex-colleague would be able to give us access to the website? Oh, yeah, that's not a problem. It's, there's not an animosity there at all. Um, it's just it's just he's moved on to other things, and, and he's he's kind enough to continue to host the site for me. Um, and, and yes, I've had, um, I've tried that before. You know? Okay. Um, so, and, and if there's a recommendation that I should 
totally change that or just, you know, go in and, and, and really hack at the, the, the text and just reduce the... Because I get lots of compliments that it's a, that it's a good-looking site. It's just it's way too wordy. So... Um, Giving us access to that mm -hmm. would at least help us to understand maybe how to make it more user-friendly for you. Okay. Um, so if that's something that you can maybe work on over the course of the next week, we can yep. get back to you and let you know what we've decided as far as what we can accomplish. Yes. Um, so that's not okay? And, and if there's some suggestion that, well, we can do this, but it would take this, and this is going to be more money, or this is going to take more time, and suggest that you hire someone to do it, then I would entertain if there's someone who, you know, wants to attempt that. I mean, I don't have a ton of money, but if there's something that someone could tackle over the summer, I mean, I know we're getting to the end of the semester here, so. <laughs> yeah, um, we're, we're a very low-cost group, so. Yeah. Um, so we'll definitely or maybe sure I donate some rooms and you can have a and you can have a raffle and then you'll have more money for <laughs> your to go to your uh, conventions. So, but I'm open to anything because it's it's like I know I have to just look at it like I'm starting a new business. So, well, let's give Maggie a round of applause for coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for at least I now know where there's another building on campus. <laughs> And uh, Tim will probably be in contact, if that's okay. Yeah, okay, ignore the message on your phone. I was like, I'm here, but I can't find you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Absolutely. And if there's something I can do for you, let me know. Because like great. I said, I have, I have beds and bathrooms and a big porch. <laughs> so, and I can feed you, all of those things. So. <laughs> all right. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And does your last name start with an L? Yeah. So, what do we think? She's really nice. She's very nice. Like oh. I said before, it sounds like she has all the ideas and like a good she's understanding of what she plan. needs to do. She just she doesn't, doesn't have, have the to tools or the yeah. ability to use the tools that are available. <laughs> Okay. Which is nice because at least there's the solid passion. business and the yeah. idea and the passion there. It's just a matter of here are the tools, here's how to use it. Yeah. I think a big start um, would be updating her profile in Google. Mm -hmm. um, her Google Plus, or not Google Plus, but the... the well, no, just like if you search for her or anything like local. The Google um, My Business stuff? Yeah, it's, it's very lacking. And so just some simple photos on there would um, help. But I also think a nice video um, would be beneficial. Um, it would help her rank. Either put it on our Facebook page, definitely on YouTube. If not, um, include that on her business page on Google. Something like that. Um, so she's going to work on getting us access to her site, which would help us to figure out what our next steps are going to be. Um, how do we feel like we can go about tackling this before the end of the semester? Because we only have so many weeks left. Do we want to split into a team that looks at websites and a team that looks at social media? Or do we want to split so one group works on Ashton Fire Department and another group works on Oaklawn? How would you guys prefer to do it? At least thinking ahead, I've got some big projects coming up and classes alone. I mean, we're just hanging out a thread until we can even work on it. I don't have marketing. Yeah. But like, unless those start, our free time is not existent. Yeah. So for what marketing class? Market research. research. We've got a 6,000 page. 6,000. I do it for my mind. 6,000 words. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm just going to hold the keys down. <laughs> 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 it's all about that word count. <laughs> the dumb thing about that word count is he deleted a bunch of words and put us below the word count so on our last paper. I think he's as concerned as we thought. Anyway. <laughs> But I, I'm just concerned if these two projects, like doing them both at the same time, is going to be unmanageable during mm -hmm. these last few weeks of school. Just thinking realistically. I mean, I think honestly, if we really wanted to, we could probably do the Ashpin Fire Department in, like a day. I mean, it's not. Yeah. There's not a lot to it. I mean, their Facebook's decent. 
They didn't really ask for help on that. They just wanted their website yeah, rebuilt. Yeah, to touch their social media. Yeah, so I think, I mean, realistically, if, like, three of us sat down and coded their website, we'd have it done in, like, two hours. Do we have any volunteers? Um, Do we have I access have, yet? I have, I have full access to the site. Um, what is it on? It is on GoDaddy, so I have full access to that. Um, I also now have a shit ton of videos and photos that my dad gave out my number to the guys <laughs> in the apartment. So <laughs> I have I have to go through the videos because some of them their audio I their language. Um, if we like it better, since we're running a little short on time today, we could just set aside next week meeting, and if anyone wants to volunteer to help with that, just during that hour, we could do that then. That would be great. Everyone feel um, good about that? And we just need like a basic template. Pretty much. Um, Rob did say that he did like splitting the members page by rank um, and adding like the years and stuff like that. Um, he says as of right now their motto is proud to serve fire and rescue. He said that's been an ongoing battle what to do. He also said that this is our chief's last year so that's no longer going to be a battle. But, you know, that's all right. Um, basically said just to idiot-proof it. Um, you. Apparatus you. is the correct term to use for that one page that we were kind of questioning. Um, do not include a donation button because right now they need to build a better relationship with our town people first before they start asking for money from them because they're kind of not too happy with us. Um, they do want the supporters with the logos. Um, oh, and also like a with like their picnic and stuff, making like a little step by step thing on how to like change the dates and stuff like that so that they can do it themselves would be a huge thing for them to do too. Sweet. So we will declare Wednesday, April 18th as a working meeting then to just kind of hammer out their department website and we can put together that instructional if we have time. Yeah. Everyone good with that? That sounds yep. good. Cool. Okay. So real quick here. Do we want to decide on a date for elections to take place? We'll have them open for a 24-hour period. We just need to decide which Wednesday to do it. Um, we could do... Hmm, we could do the 25th, even though we have the men's search event, and just have all the information for each candidate online. I think that'd be fine. Okay, so we'll have it open probably from 6 p.m. on the 25th to 6 p.m. on the 26th, if everyone's cool with that. Um, all elected positions, you know, president, vice president, treasurer, film director, secretary, they will all be up for grabs. Um, some, be, some people may rerun. I'm going to rerun, but no one should feel like they're ineligible because of lack of experience or anything like that. It's fair game for everyone. Um, if you are interested in running or if you want more information on those applications, I will put those out and put the applications live on OrgSync and I will help Lauren put together the, the poll yeah. so that we can just insert the information right away. Um, we'll just have it be kind of similar to what we were going to do for the earlier election. Hey, Kevin. I didn't mean to interrupt. Hell yeah. <laughs> You're so bright. Like, you know, usually people say the opposite of that. <laughs> That's um, what the sweatshirt's for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm compensating for it. <laughs> Hello. Hey. She's gone. He, he ran out of the sweatshirt. I just came yeah. from yoga. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so our elections are going to run from 6 p.m. on the 25th to 6 p.m. on the 26th. So that's the Wednesday, two Wednesdays from now. Um, so if you're interested in applying, there will be applications online, um, and then you'll be asked to submit kind of like a one paragraph bio and an image that we can put into the poll so that people can get the same information from everyone. Um, 
You can run for multiple positions if you so choose. Um, there's really not any sort of a, I don't know, a requirement in order to be able to run. Um, so fair game. Any questions about election? Okay, cool. Well, um, we will plan on doing elections then, and we will have sort of an impromptu executive board meeting for those new officers on the following Wednesday, which would be the second, um, so that we can get them kind of acclimated into managing OrgSync and et cetera, et cetera. Sound good? Cool. Uh, do not forget, we have the Men's Search April events. They are going to be talking about turning analytics into actionable performance steps. How cool is that? They are bringing in a guy. I have this up here. His name is Josh Mo, which I think is really funny because if you kind of rearranged it, it would be like Joe Schmo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you realize I won't be able to look at him when I do <laughs> Also, please tell him that in person. <laughs> I will pay you. To <laughs> Actually, he probably laughed. I don't know it. Oh, you can't be the first one that's I, that. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, Josh Mo or Joe Schmo, however you prefer it, the senior digital analyst for Health Partners. How cool is that? We'll be presenting on making the shift from reporting to analysis. It's going to be really cool. Even Tony Telejohn, former Men's Search president, is super jazzed about it and is hoping to go. This will be a cool event, and we will do our usual carpool. So if you are free from 4 to like 9.30, two Wednesdays from now, make it a point to go. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right, we will have posters up. Just email idma at uwso.edu if you have any interest in attending that event. It's free, there's mm -hmm. food, it's entertaining. Should I whip up a quick poster? We'll do that during the executive board thing. Right. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what time would like people be leaving? We would leave it here at 4. Okay. Um, so that's kind of where we ask people to show up. Um, we're usually really early, but in case there's traffic, we like to have that little bit of room. Um, so we'd leave here at 4 and we'd carpool to the cities. Um, yes. Where is that post? Is it at Rocket 55 yes. again? Okay. And they just got an office puppy. His name is Bernie. Oh, so you you know it. He pulled the Instagram. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Have to go. Oh, puppy. Oh, my God. This is the cutest image you're about to see. It. <laughs> it's, it's really freaking cute. That doesn't look like a puppy. <laughs> oh, they're a puppy organization. They don't have it. Oh. Oh. So they have an office puppy now. This is where it is being hosted. You cannot not go to this event. <laughs> That's a double. This is a really cool office. And now there's a <laughs> <You don't have laughs> It just makes it that much better. <laughs> to meet the office puppy. <laughs> I just like his eyebrows. Like, you know, are they cute? <laughs> yeah, so um, it'll be very cool. Uh, it's usually like business casual dress code. It's really chill. There's lots of industry professionals there, so it's a great networking opportunity, and it's really low stress, so it's not like the career conference where everyone is so stressed about having to make a connection that they're going to forget it two minutes later. Like, these are sustainable connections. Even us, Megan, like, you know, these people are constantly pushing us job opportunities. She had an interview with Bite Squad because Josh Bratton, the membership director of, like, Men's Search, sent an offer our I know, now I officially need to meet him because I mentioned him during the interview and I was like, I know someone who knows him. <laughs> <laughs> but also, yeah, I know that one girl back from Rocky. I mean, she never responded, so I'm just secretly hoping I typed in the wrong address. But, <laughs> but very, very yeah. cool opportunity. Uh, that is April 25th. We will leave here at 4. If you are interested, email IDMA and just let me know so that I could register up ahead of time um, and get us all ready to go. And here is actually upstairs, right? Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, whatever. Well, it's just for clarification. <laughs> Yeah, we meet outside in 236, which is that glass room. But I went to walk in there and people were in business casually. 
What's that? Doing presentations up there today. I went to walk in. And I was like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Were you wearing the sweatshirt? Yeah, it's just been a minute ago. I didn't. I didn't go through the door. I saw through the window that there was a crowd. I was like. Uh, <laughs> yes. It's like a very formal presentation. Yeah. I walked in in that. <laughs> 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 All right. So, any questions about that event? Any last lingering questions about anything? Men Search Summit. We got money from the university to send people to go. Do not make. Sh do not make it so we have nobody using this funding. We, like, it's so rare. We didn't get funded for next year. We got funded for this year. June 22nd, it'll be an all-day event. There's food, there's, there's snacks, there's lunch, there's breakfast, there's a happy hour, there's like... And there's tons actually of, workshops. No. Yeah, there's tons <laughs> of like awesome presenters. Like This event is going to be so cool. Like You do not want to miss it. Oh, yeah. Where is it located? So this event will be at the St. Paul River Center, um, and we will carpool again if that's something you need if you're in the Menominee area. Um, otherwise, you can drive there yourself, whatever works. Um, it's in St. Paul, Minnesota, St. Paul River Center. Um, it's really a fun event. I, I really enjoyed it. It's a great opportunity to network and to learn some new things. Um, it's the, most re it's the most relevant digital marketing summit in the Midwest. It's really cool. Yeah, I would go it's, to it it's again. Very, I, I mean, people I really go to this. Go. People who are Another players go to this. <laughs> so, yes? Yes, do you want me to email? Email! Okay. Yes, the deadline is supposed to be Friday, but we kind of dropped the ball on campus late today, so we might move it to next week Friday, just to kind of, like, make sure that people have a chance to, to kind of apply for that. Um, yeah, this event is really cool, June 22nd, um, so I know people don't necessarily know their summer plans, but they've got this cool little countdown if you go to their website. Um, this event costs like 300 plus dollars per person to go, and three people from our university get to go for free. Like, that is no joke. Like, don't miss this opportunity. It's, it's going to be really cool. Like... I don't know if any of you know who this is. Apparently, no one does. Oh, but Rand's like, gonna be back. I don't know, but I I this guy, like, I, I pray that I see him at this event because he's kind <laughs> of my hero. That's where I'm <laughs> yeah, see but they have all of these like keynote speakers that are all over. They have a marketing scientist from Moz, um, someone from Sierra Interactive, Unbounce. What is this? Sterling Sky, White Spark, Shift Six, um, PPC Hero, like. There, there's people from all over. These are all businesses that could potentially hire you someday. Like, you don't want to miss this opportunity. I can't stress that enough. Any questions? No? Okay, well, that's all I got for today. Uh, next week, Wednesday, will be our working meeting. We will work on the Ashpen Fire Department website and hopefully get that all plugged out in one meeting. Woohoo! Woo I need it. Yay! <laughs> oh, um, do you need any more footage for the... Uh, not more than, like, what I'll do, like, in the classroom. Like, for Chris's classroom, just, like, like be real. Got it. Yeah. I, I like how you volunteered. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool, well... I might have to make everybody sit close together, because we're good at waiting in numbers, so... No. Yeah. Does anyone have any we had a strong seven today. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any questions about the elections, about different positions and what they do? Does anyone want me to walk through position duties or talk about what we do in executive board meetings or anything? What do you guys do in executive board meetings? We hang out. We have a good time. We, we yeah, plan for future us. meetings. We, uh, That's when the party began. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To break out the chocolate. I mean, I bring food sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's a lot of like planning and preparation for future events. It's not a lot of like hard work, really. It's I mean, we distribute duties to like make posters and and get Campus Life Today posts up and and do like the promotion for the events so that we can potentially get students there. 
Uh, we talk about website changes. We plan the monthly events. So it's good experience to be on the leadership board. Um, I don't know. Give it a chance. It's really not that much outside of the executive board meeting. We meet from 7 to 8.30 this semester. It might be a different time next semester. But we'll work around your schedules, and you just meet for an hour and a half a week and plan things out. It's a good resume builder. You can talk about that the MN search event. Yeah, and testimonials. <laughs> cool. Well, um, all of those applications will be up on OrgSync soon. So keep an eye out for them. If you have any interest in campaigning, um, you can email. I don't know. Do you like you don't watch the IDMA email? No, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I have access to it. I don't know what's happening there. I haven't had a chance to have so. access to that. Um, I don't know. You can email Lauren directly. If yeah, you know that, that. that would work better. Yeah, so. you can email Lauren. Her last name is Yokum. So that's cool. Um, if you have any questions. <laughs> Uh, since she's graduating, she's kind of like our impartial election manager person, um, since she's so kindly volunteered to do that. Uh, yeah, so campaigns will all have it online, submit a paragraph and like a picture of yourself, preferably professional. <laughs> Not a shirtless picture from Nicaragua, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like how she looked right at you. I knew she was talking about me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, it could have been either of you. She was just looking in general. Yeah. Right. There's history. I mean, I'm pretty sure it would be asking Chris Isaacson not to post a shirtless picture for Nicaragua. <laughs> yeah, probably not like the case. Poor Katie. <laughs> Well, um, I think this is going off the rails. <laughs> That's Chris So it is 7 p.m. General members are excused. Please, please, please make sure you bring people to next week's meeting so that we can get the website all hammered out and taken care of. <coughs> Woo! Get that out of the way. Oh, all right. Bad. Thanks, general members. Thank you. Can you do a deep one? Good. My car finally gets fixed, and everyone's driving me around for a week. Yeah, I thought I'd go cry.